This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin al-Nab'uthi rahmatin lil'alameen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bil ihsan illa yawm al-deen wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimeen. Alhamdulillah, it is the prayer that is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers. It was given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the night of Isra and Mi'raj where the Prophet ﷺ was granted this gift by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any, without any middle person, without any intermediary. And it is this gift in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the slave to enter into his presence, to address him directly, to, have, to be in communion with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, this prayer Although an obligation, it must be it must be understood as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And being that it is a gift, one must perform it in a way that is, uh, that is indicative of their gratitude for this gift. That must be performed in a way out of love and yearning and desire for this communion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed, the one who is in prayer is in communion with their Lord. And he said, That the closest a slave can be from their Lord is when they're in prostration. And he said, That the prayer is the ascension of the believer. Now, if the prayer is established in a way that is most befitting of the prayer, then the rewards and the secrets and the realities that come back onto the, onto the person who is praying uh, are indescribable, are too, it's so profound that the person's heart is changed right, and illuminated and purified. Right? Thus the, 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 the light of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nearness and his direct concern for that slave becomes uh, manifest on the heart of that slave. And this is why the person who is a person of prayer, a person who's attached to the prayer, to the real realities of the prayer, that they are excluded from the human nature. They're excluded from the, the base nature of the human being, of the human condition. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the insana khuniqa halu'a, Indeed, the human being was created in a state of anxiety. If, if some difficulty or some bad happens to them, right, they are grief-stricken. And if something good happens to them, then they are always worried that that good be, will be lost. So they're constantly withholding that good from ever being taken away from them. Right? Except for those who are people of prayer except for those who are the people of prayer. Right? Those who are constantly upon their prayer. Now this idea of being constantly upon the prayer does not mean that this person is praying all, uh, all day and all night, 24 hours in the prayer, but rather it means that the realities of the prayer have seeped into their spirit, have seeped into their heart, and have thus transformed them such that they are in constant uh, they are constantly in a state of closeness and presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that one would be in the prayer. And because of the state of their prayer, that it has, it has seeped and has, uh, has spread into their daily activities and in the way that they carry themselves in every action and every dealing, so that they are constantly in a state of prayer, in a state of communion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a state of connection and reunion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so it is the, the prayer that is the the soul of the the action of all good deeds. It is the spirit of all good deeds, and it is the reality of the ranks of closeness and and union with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. By means of this prayer, the the light of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala 
is manifest in the person, uh, in in that person's uh, heart and spirit and body. So the person who has a complete certainty in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala illuminates their 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 insight and purifies their heart from all other than Him Subhanahu wa Taala. So that their their concern is completely gathered in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and in that prayer. So by means of that, they they traverse great lengths in this in the path to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and they as as it is said that they, uh, that they are in some ways intoxicated from the the drink of this closeness with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, metaphorically speaking, right? So this purification that 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 happens as as a result of this prayer and this gathering of one's concern in the prayer right and this this uh, this illumination of the heart that happens during this prayer what does this what does this cause what does this result in this results in a state of absolute villa of, of absolute lowliness and inkisar and brokenness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is resultant of this reverential awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this reverential and, and, and majestic, this perception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's absolute majesty, right, in, results in a person's feeling deficient and feeling lowly and feeling broken, right, and feeling needy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that Right. As the prayer increases them in their neediness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they constantly yearn for more of the prayer because the prayer is the the fixing of their broken state. It is the raising of their lowliness. It is the fulfillment of their deficiency. Right. So they, they feel deficient because of the prayer and therefore they yearn for the prayer to be whole again, to be in union with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they feel deficient in their gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore they pray the prayer in order to show their gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They feel broken because of them, their their lack of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they enter the prayer to be more connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the secret of the prayer, but it is only for those who give the prayer its due rights, right? And those who who pray the prayer not out of reluctancy and not out of a sense of obligation, but rather they pray the prayer out of a sense of need, that they know that they need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they need that union with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, their prayer, that they look forward to the prayer, that they yearn for the prayer and they enter in the prayer out of a state of love and reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the, these prayers, the prayers of these people are extremely different than the prayer of the one who just prays out of reluctancy or the person who prays out of a sense of obligation, right? Because the prayer out of a sense of obligation right, is a deficient level because the person has yet to realize how much of a gift the prayer is, right? Imagine if you were to give a gift to someone and they reluctantly accepted it, right? Do they, do you, would you feel that they have shown the, the right level of gratitude for that gift, right? And it's not true, right? So the person who enters into the prayer, right, they have entered a state of khudur, of, of, of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and their, their concern is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore it shows up in the way that they make their du'as, in the way that they recite their Qur'an, in the way that they perform their prostration, in the way that they, they turn their hearts, not only their bodies, but they turn their hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they enter the prayer and they say the opening statement, Allahu Akbar, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute, absolutely great, right? They, what is the reality that is in their hearts is that there is none that is great in their hearts except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is as if they have cast all besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind their backs and uh, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And it is as if they, their whole beginning and their end is all directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they, they call the jama'ah, the, the gathering of one's concern, 100% on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Which is completely opposite of what happens in our, in, the, in our times now, which is called shatatul bal, that the fragmentation of one's mind or heart, that one's thoughts are going here and there and everywhere, but the, and there's no focus on any one thing. So the prayer 
when you say Allahu Akbar, it is as if you're saying that there is none right, that is great except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my heart. And I'm casting every other concern right, behind my back because it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is, the, that is my main concern. Right? And from Him is my beginning and to Him is my end. Right? However, the person as they are striving to improve their prayer and they're striving to achieve these meanings that we're talking about that are hidden within the prayer for those who seek it, right? then they, they have to strive to make sure that their, their actions do not belie their statements, that, they're, that what they're saying is not, right, is not true within the depths of their hearts. So if a person says with their tongue, Allah is the, is the absolutely great, meaning that there is none great in my heart except Allah, and, and it so happens that in their heart, other things are of greater concern, that their heart is turned toward this thought or that thought or this concern or that concern or this need or that need of the worldly life, right? then their statement is not, is not proven true by their state. Right? So the person must strive to not only say Allahu Akbar, but to actually mean it. And to really, by saying Allahu Akbar, that they cast behind their back all other concerns. Right? And this will take time. And this will take effort. Right? And, and the, the first way to start right, is to make sure that one's actions in the prayer do not belie, belie that statement. Right? So a person says that Allah is the greatest, but in the prayer they're fidgeting, in the prayer that they're playing with their, their clothing, they're playing with their beard, their their eyes are here, looking here and looking there, right? The, if one were to look at that person, they would say that, okay, that person's claim that Allah is the greatest in their heart is not true, right? It must be a lie, right? So this is, this is one of the areas that we can improve our prayer is that we can start from the outward in, right, to the inward, right? And, and by doing this, that over time, what happens is that a person's prayer starts to do exactly what the person is saying, that we're saying Allahu Akbar. And what happens is that the prayer, because of the person's uh, complete focus in it, that the prayer starts to make Allahu Akbar real in the heart. It, the, the, the heart starts to accept the meanings of Allah is the absolutely great. There is no great except for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it starts to shed away all the concerns of the worldly life and shed away all any, any other ulterior motives besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that there is no goal and there's no one that's sought except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that person's heart, and that there is no love attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So that all of the, all of the person's concerns, his worldly concerns, his worldly attachments have been completely cast behind their backs, right? And that, that their heart has directed itself directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the meaning of the opening of the of the prayer. However, right after the opening of the prayer, right, we have a du'a, and these 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 du'as and these different remembrances through the prayer are not incidental. They're not accidental. They are from the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> the one who does not speak from mere whim, rather it is revelation revealed. Right, the one who is teaching who is teaching us these du'as is teaching us where the heart should be in that place during the prayer, right? So we, we already discussed about the opening of the prayer, that where the heart should be, that Allahu Akbar, that the heart should be focused on that the fact that there is none that one should be concerned with except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if one has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has the contentment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then regardless of what else happens in their worldly life and what else happens in their day, in their day to day life, Nothing matters because they are they are felicitous that they are successful because they have Allah subhanahu wa taala, whereas the one who has all of the worldly pleasures and the worldly material gains and all of these things, right, but they do not have Allah subhanahu wa taala and they do not have this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa taala, then they are the losers and then they are the wretched. May Allah make us amongst the successful and those who have Allah subhanahu wa taala's divine pleasure. Right, so when we answer the prayer, that is the meaning that is at that moment most profound and most important. But right after we enter the prayer, now that we're in the realm of the prayer, you can say the, the communion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, the next dua that the Prophet teaches us 
and there's multiple narrations of this, but one of the most um, most profound of them is the verse of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, on the tongue of uh, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, وَجَّهْتُ وَجَهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْعَبْدِ I have completely turned my entire being toward uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has created the heavens and the earth. Right, so what the person is saying with their tongue right, becomes now a reality in their heart if they are saying it out of that opening state of Allahu Akbar. Right, so let's take a piece of this at a time. He says, وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّهِ That I completely turn my my being to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is meant by wajh here, which is literally translated as face, that I turn my face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it means right, the face of my heart, meaning my my heart and all of my concern I am turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, with those, in, those original meanings of Allahu Akbar. So out of complete lowliness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of him being the, the ultimately great and the tremendous, and out of a sense of like, desperation to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is the completely free from need and the generous, and out of complete yearning to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is the forbearance, the one who forgives sins, and the most merciful, the one who, who pardons uh, one's misdoings. Uh, and out of a sense of reliance upon him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is the one who has all power. He is the one who has all ability. So if we really understand these meanings, then we we wonder why we have devoted our, our, our heart's concern to creation. Why are we lowly in front of people? Why are we concerned for people? Why are we desperately in need of people? Why are we yearning for the pleasure of others when it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the, the absolutely great, the one who can fulfill our, our, our needs, the one who can f forgive our sins, and the one who can, uh, can do all that we need for him from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so I turn my, uh, my entire essence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning I turn my heart and all of my concern to Allah in these four ways, out of complete humility, neediness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yearning for his closeness and his forgiveness and reliance on him subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek making him our guardian and making him our one to go to in times of need. Right? The one who created the heavens and the earth. Right? So at that moment when a person says this opening dua, they have already entered the prayer by saying Allahu Akbar. Right? And then they enter the dua uh, the second du'a after that's the du'a of opening of the prayer. Right at that point, right, a person starts to realize the the reality of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's generosity, right, and and beneficence, and right because of that, there becomes no other goal and no other point of yearning for that person, whether it be in the earth or in the heavens, except that it is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, qualities that are ultimately perfect. And everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deficient in its entirety. So now a person has started with Allah is the ultimately great or the absolutely great. Right, and then the heart right, turns its complete concern toward that ultimately great, the absolutely great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the heart's realization that there is none great except Allah. Therefore, why should I concern myself with anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right, so this is something of the opening dua, right? The one who created the heavens and the earth. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth, then why should I, why should I concern myself? Why should I turn my heart's concern toward created entities when the creator has given me a way to be in communion with him subhanahu wa ta'ala? and to connect directly to him subhanahu wa ta'ala hanifan musliman wa ma ana min al mushrikeen out of a state of pure faith and a pure inclination toward truth meaning hanifan uh, meaning that i am not turning toward toward the right or to the left or to anyone other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my yearning or in my uh, reverence or in my awe 
of other than Allah SWT, I am only turning to Allah because only Allah deserves my yearning and only Allah deserves my awe. Musliman, right? And I'm in complete submission to Allah. I'm turning to Allah in complete submission. And I am not of those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that there is no other that I'm seeking except Allah. There is no other that I am in, in reverential awe of except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other that I'm needy of except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who really understand the, the blessing of this prayer and to be of those whose hearts are transformed by the prayer, therefore constantly in the state of the prayer in their daily actions and, and their daily life. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.